All right, so good morning. Welcome, everyone. My name is Marie Strauch. I'm the educator with Your New School. A little bit about myself. I am a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor in the state of Illinois. I've been in the industry for 26 years. Um, I did spend 15 years in a beauty school, um, multiple beauty schools, and now I'm strictly teaching online and working in my own salon. So today we are going to kind of do an overview on all of the artificial nail products that are available through Nail Alliance. Um, so we're gonna, it's just gonna be a quick overview and then I'll flip my camera on and then I'll do a demonstration on a few of our artificial nail products that are available. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to type those into the chat box. I'll do my best to keep an eye on it. At the very end, I'll scroll through in case I missed any and make sure that I answer all of your questions. Um, and again, please make sure that you keep your microphones muted and your cameras turned off. That minimizes feedback and static noise and keeps buffering to a bare minimum. For those who just jumped on, please also make sure that you are typing your attendance information into the chat box. The chat box is the only thing that saves when I log out. So it does need to be your full name, full school name, and school location if you're a student logging in remotely. If you're a school and you're logging in together as a group, I just need school name and location and the word group, and I'll make sure to get your certificate sent over to your schools. All right, so let's get started. Welcome to the world of Nail Alliance. Our mission statement is to provide the salon industry with all the tools salon businesses even more successful with the latest and greatest in nail products, establish opportunity for learning through proper education and training courses domestically and internationally, create superiority within the industry as the go-to nail manufacturer for state-of-the-art products proven to perform to the best of standards while upholding the motto done right from the start, and understand the needs of the salon industry. As nail professionals ourselves, we have a clear understanding of the industry and the demand for the highest quality products and services possible, which is why quality has and will always be our number one priority. So who is Nail Alliance? We are the Jellish Soak Off Gel Polishes, Jellish Hard Gels, Morgan Taylor Nail Polish, Fair Luxury Manicure Pedicure Products, Nail Harmony, Prohesion, and more. So like I said, we're going to focus on the artificial nail products that are available through Nail Alliance. So the first one is the Prohesion Acrylic. Um, so a couple things about the Prohesion Acrylic. Um, the monomer, we have two monomers, traditional and odorless. The odorless monomer was created strictly for beauty schools um, and to be put in cosmetology and nail technician kits. Um, you probably won't be able to find this at Cosmoprof or Salon Centric or whoever, whatever nail supply place carries Nail Alliance. Um, because again, the odorless was strictly created for beauty schools. Um, so once you graduate and you're gonna, if you decide to continue to use Prohesion, you'll probably only find the traditional at beauty supply places. So the mixing ratio, it depends on what you're using. Traditional mixing or the traditional monomer, it's a two to one mixing ratio, which is two parts liquid, one part powder. Odorless is more of a one and a half to one. The mixing ratio does vary based on the temperature in the room. So sometimes you do need to adjust the um, your mixing ratio if the bead isn't firming up like you want it to. Um, and it could just be the temperature in the room. You do have a very large temperature range to be working with when you're working with acrylic. As long as the temperature range is between 69, 70 degrees, as warm as 76 degrees, anywhere in that range, you're fine. So artificial um, ac or acrylic nails, acrylic is self-leveling. Um, so as you apply the product, it will start to self-level on the nail. The more wet the bead, the more it self-levels. The drier the bead, the less it self-levels. Um, polymers. The nice thing about Prohesion is you can use either the traditional or the odorless monomer with your same polymers. So you don't have to switch your powders out. Um, other brands, when they have odorless systems, they also have their own powders that go along with their monomer. That's not the case with ours. You just use the same polymers and you just switch out your liquid. Um, you do still need to use pH bond, which is your nail dehydrator. You also need to use Pro Bond, which is your acid-free primer. And then we always finish our enhancements with cuticle oil. 
available within the Prohesion line is Dual Coat. Dual Coat is your acrylic nail sealer. It dries in 90 seconds and it's gonna give you a durable glass-like finish. I personally do not use Dual Coat. Um, I have no patience for things that air dry. I prefer using gel <laughs> polish, so that's what I use. Um, or gel top coats. But if you don't have access to an LED light and you're doing pink and whites and you want your finish to have that high shine glass-like finish, dual coat is your option. And then the removal, it is a soap off. Um, depending on how much you pre-removed, I like to take my e-file and get a good 70, 80% of the product off first. And then I soak with my artificial nail remover for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, if you are hand filing and you don't get a good amount off, then your soak time will just be a little longer, which is fine. Um, as long as you're soaking it off and you're not prying them off, you will be fine. Acrylic brushes. Um, all of our acrylic brushes are high quality sculpting brushes. They're made of 100% um, Kalinske hair. Their ergonomically wood handles are excellent for control. We have multiple different brushes available. My favorite is the Pro 9, which is what I use. It's also available in a size seven. Um, my daughter loves the seven. I like the nine. You use the brush that you like. And then if you are gonna be somebody who likes to do three-dimensional acrylic designs, such as flower petals or leaves, using colored acrylics and that kind of stuff, um, you're definitely gonna want a 3D acrylic nail art brush. This brush is designed to hold very minimal liquid so that you can create those three-dimensional designs without your bead self-leveling too much. Um, so you definitely want to use a dry bead when you are working um, with your nail art designs. So a, the Maestro is our 3D acrylic nail art brush. And so these are the brushes that are available for acrylic. Next is hard gels. So some key points about hard gel, there is no odor because there's no monomer. Now acrylic, if you're using the traditional, you're definitely going to have some monomer odor. Hard gels are truly completely odorless. Also no mixing ratio. Um, you just apply it directly from the jar. It is very self-leveling and it self-levels very quickly. You still need to use pH bond and pro bond acid-free primer, just like our acrylic system. Um, we have two different types of gels. We have a builder gel and a clear gel. The builder gel is a thick viscosity gel. It comes in clear, dark pink, cover pink, and white. Builder gel is just that. It is designed so that you can build an enhancement. We then have clear gel, and it only comes in clear. And this is a medium viscosity gel. We use this for capping and encapsulating. Um, I love to use it for natural nail overlays. I personally like to use it when I'm doing nail repairs. Um, so clear gel, I actually use quite often. And then photo finish, that is your hard gel sealer or top coat. Again, great for pink and whites. I also like to, um, if I'm doing gel polish over my hard gels, then I don't use the photo finish. I'll just use the top coat that comes along with the gel polish. And then we have French white, which is different than the builder white. French white is a thin viscosity white hard gel, and it's in a polish bottle. It's used to do express French applications to eliminate backfilling on your pink and whites. Um, I love the French white for that. The thing that you need to be careful is because it is in a polish bottle, so it goes on like a polish, but it performs like a hard gel. It is a hard gel. It does not soak off accidentally grab this with a polish application, like a gel polish application, and they come back in two weeks to soak off the polish, the white will not come off. So the removal is a file off system. So we do leave a very thin layer and you let that grow out. So when you're removing hard gels, you start with your most coarse file, which is our 150, or you can use an e-file, and you want to get a majority of the product off, about 70%. Then you'll switch to hand filing to continue to smooth down that enhancement until you can buff the remaining enhancement into the natural nail, leaving a very thin application until it grows out. You do need an LED or UV light when you're working with hard gels. So depending on what lamps you're using, your cure times will vary. LED, it's a 30 second cure. You want to make sure that 
you're using a lamp that is designed to cure hard gels as well. Um, so just make sure your lamp can accommodate hard gels. If you're using a UV light, it's a two minute cure. If you're using UV lights, you wanna make sure that the wattage is a minimum of 36 watts so that you're getting proper cure. And then we have a three different gel brushes that you can choose from. We have the number six oval, the number six square, and the number seven square. Um, I love the oval. It's my favorite brush. I use the number six oval. I get beautiful smile lines with it, which is why I like to use the oval. And then I do have the square, but I use my square gel brush for nail art um, to do like the one stroke flower techniques. So that's what I use my square brush, but it's up to you what brush you want to use with your hard gel. Again, you have choices available. And then if you're looking for a little bit of a larger brush, we do have the seven square. Now these are synthetic bristles. Um, so after you're done using them, you always want to make sure that you recap them. There's always going to be a thin residue of gel on the bristles, and you just don't want those to get exposed to LED or UV light, and then the brush hardens and you won't be able to use your brush anymore. So they all come with a cap, so just make sure you always keep them capped when you're not using them. Our next artificial nail product is Polygel. Now, I absolutely love Polygel. It's my preferred artificial nail product, um, purely for these reasons. It's odorless. There's no mixing ratio. It is not self-leveling. It stays exactly where you put it. You do need to use pH bond dehydrator, but you do not need to use the acid-free primer. Instead, you use the foundation base gel, and then you finish it with your top it off top coat. They come in squeeze tubes that are about two ounces, Colors available are natural clear, soft white, bright white, dark pink, light pink, and cover pink. It's molded with an alcohol-based product called Slip Solution. And the Slip Solution is so that the brush does not stick to the poly gel as you're using it. Um, if you are gonna be a poly gel user, you really need to invest in brush cleaner. This is gonna keep the poly tool in optimum condition. When I first started using Polygel, and this was before I started working for and with Gelish in your new school, um, it, it was you know, a brand new product. I happened to be at the beauty supply and it was on the shelf calling my name. And I was like, I need to know what you are. So I bought everything, not knowing how to use it or what it was. I just was like, yep, I'm going to try this. So I followed the instructions on the back, not realizing that I needed brush cleaner to keep my brush clean. I was just using nail surface cleanser when the product was getting built up onto my brush, it started curling the bristles of my brush and it's impossible to fix that. You're gonna need a new brush if that happens. I will try to find my old poly gel brush to show you what that looks like. Um, so if you destroy your poly gel brush, you're gonna have to get a new one. So if you are a poly gel user or plan to be one, you definitely need brush cleaner. And then poly tool, that's your brush. It's a number 10 synthetic brush on one end and a slicing spatula on the other so that you can slice the product from the tube and apply it to the nail. You do need an LED or UV light to cure poly gel. Um, if you're using the 18G or an LED light, again, minimum of 36 watts for either UV or LED. It does take a longer cure time. It is 60 seconds in an LED or three minutes in a UV light. So let's kind of talk about the difference between these three products, because these are the ones that I feel are used the most in salon settings. So um, when it comes to actual extensions. So let's talk about them. Your play and set time. With Polygel, you have infinite time to work with the product. It's on-demand curing. Acrylic and hard gel, your time is limited because acrylic, the moment you create that bead, it begins to firm. Hard gel, even though it doesn't cure until it, reach, it is exposed to an LED light, because it self-levels so quickly, I tend to do a lot of flash curing to keep it in place. So your time is limited when you're working with it. The workability. There's no chasing with poly gel. It stays exactly where you put it on the nail. Um, there is some chasing with acrylic, more chasing if you are using a wet bead. Um, but there's not too much chasing, just a little. And then hard gel, there's definitely a lot of chasing because again, it self-levels so quickly. So you do have to chase after the product a little more. 
level of difficulty, if you had to pick between these three, which one was the easiest and which one was the hardest, I would say polygel definitely hands down is the easiest product to work with. Acrylic, in my opinion, is pretty easy to work with, but if I had to compare the three, I would say it was moderate. And then hard gel is definitely the most difficult to work with. But once you start working with hard gel and you know the product, then it really is pretty easy to work with. So the weight of the product. And what we mean by weight is how it actually feels on your fingers. Poly gel is feather light. You barely feel like you have anything on your nails. Out of the three, acrylic is the heaviest. Hard gels are moderately heavy. Your drying time. Poly gel does need a 60 second cure in an LED or three minutes in a UV. Acrylic, about eight to 10 minutes when it's completely hard and ready for filing. And then hard gels, 30 second cure in an LED. Monomer odor. There's no odor with poly gel. We definitely have an odor when it comes to acrylic. And then there's no odor with hard gel. So poly gel and hard gel are both completely odorless. Now hard gel, I would say is 100% odorless. Poly gel, the slip solution that we use, it is an alcohol based product. So it definitely has that alcohol smell, but it's not strong and it's not a horrible smell. It actually smells like fruit. It's got conditioning agents in it. Um, so it doesn't dry out the skin surrounding the nail when you're using it. And it also helps so that it doesn't dry out your brush. So it does have a pleasant odor, so it's not strong at all. But for the most part, the poly gel itself though is odorless. Product waste. There is no waste with poly gel. If you squeezed too much out, you can always just scrape it off and put it on the next nail. I like to work two to three nails at a time. That way I make sure that I'm not overusing the product. Um, the only time you're really gonna have waste is if you're working on that very last nail and you squeeze too much product out. Then you may have some waste. But other than that, there's no waste with poly gel. There's moderate waste with acrylic. There's a lot of waste with hard gel. Um, purely for the fact that it self levels, you have to flash cure it and you have to put multiple layers to create the arc and apex that you're looking for for strength and support. So there is a little more waste with hard gel. And then poly gel does need the application of an LED light as well as hard gels. And then you do not need an LED light for acrylic. All right, so now let's move on to what most people don't realize are artificial nail products. First is the gelish soak off gel polishes. So Gel polish is an artificial nail. It is a gel. It's a very thin gel, but it is a gel product. And you prep the nail just like you would prep for any artificial nail product. So it does require pH bond to dehydrate the nail. You need to use foundation base gel. Um, no primer is needed. Um, base gel is what's gonna create that adhesive bond between the nail plate and the gel product. Depending on the lamp you're using, you're using any of our 18 G's, it's a five second cure. If you're using a UV lamp, it's a one minute cure. You're also going to have your top it off, which is your top coat or your nail sealer. It's also available in matte. The matte and the traditional top it off is a 30 second cure in your 18 G or two minutes in a UV light. We now have a no cleanse top coat. It does require a longer cure time, so it's 60 seconds in your 18G or three minutes in a UV light. And then the gel polish, we have an array of colors from shimmers, glitters, and creams. And every time a new collection is released, it's released in Morgan Taylor nail polish, gelish soak off gel polishes, as well as the express dip. And then cure times for your polish is 30 seconds in an 18G or two minutes in a UV light. The removal is soak off, so you'll break the seal and then you'll soak for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, there are a ton of other products that are available within the soak off line. There's a product called Structure Gel, which is a soak off builder gel. If you do use Structure Gel underneath your gel polish, your soak time to soak off the product may be closer to the 15 minute mark, um, sometimes even 20 minutes, depending on how thick of a layer you did of your Structure Gel. Um, but again, it's a soak off builder gel. And next is our express dip. So yes, the dip is an artificial nail product. It's an acrylic um, that just does not require monomer. 
Now the express dip, you cannot use this with monomer. The original dip powder, you were able to use that powder with your acrylic monomer. The express dip, you cannot do that. Um, so don't think that you can not use this as a colored acrylic um, because it does have activator built into the powder which gives you no more gummy brushes. It's going to eliminate your base coat and top coat brushes from hardening. The built-in activator is for faster application. It also has a patent pending biotin and calcium infused in the powder as well, which is gonna help with the strength of the natural nail. Um, you still need to prep the nail with your nail dehydrator, which is nail prep. You still need to use all of your same liquids, regardless of which dipping powder you're using, whether you're using the express dipping powder or the original. The original dip powder, again, you can use that with monomer if you wanted to use it as a colored acrylic. So if you do have the original dip powder or you happen to see it in the beauty supply stores and it's on sale or clearance, definitely pick them up because you can definitely use them as colored acrylic. The express, you just cannot. But you still need to use your base coat, your top coat, the activator, um, your base coat is fast drying. It's going to get full absorption of your dipping powder. It also contains vitamins A, E, and calcium. It is a sanoacrylate based product, which is why you're not using monomer. So sanoacrylate is less sensitizing than acrylate, which is typically found, or monoacrylate, which is found in monomers. Um, so it makes a great option for a client who's looking for nail extensions who may be allergic to acrylic. This might be an option for them. Your top coat has a slightly slower drying time than the base coat, but it's to help give extra strength and support to the finished application. It's also going to give your, um, give that high gloss finish. It also contains vitamins A, E, and calcium. It's also a sanoacrylate based product. Activator, you definitely need to use your activator. It's going to speed up the polymerization and reduce discoloration and yellowing and keep yellowing to a bare minimum, especially with those lighter colors. Um, the activator is going to not only speed up the polymerization of the powder into the base coat, but it also just speeds up the drying time of your base and your top coats. If for whatever reason your base and top coat brushes do get hardened and have buildup of product, you're going to need the brush cleaner and that's going to remove any of that buildup. Take the cap off, swap out your cap, let it soak for about five to ten minutes, and then make sure you wipe that brush clean before it goes back into its original bottle so that you're not cross-contaminating. And again, the Express Dip Powder does have activator incorporated into the powder for faster cure time, and it also contains biotin and calcium to help strengthen the nail. And the nice thing about the activator being built into the powder is after you dip, the moment that powder hits the base coat, it immediately cures. So you can immediately use a little dusting brush and dust off the excess powder and move on to your second application. Um, so that's what it was designed for and it's definitely helped to reduce those gummy brushes. The only one I did not put in the PowerPoint is our soft gels. Um, soft gels are our full coverage tips. They are great. They are an artificial nail product. Um, I don't find them to be used all that often in salons. Um, they are, I, for me, it's not a go-to product um, when I'm doing artificial nails. I do use them for special occasion nails um, for the client who does not want to does not want maintenance, the client that I know is not going to come back and get a fill. So brides, vacationers, homecoming, prom, school dances, those kind of clients that they're not going to come back. They're just looking for nice nails for a special occasion and then they can just come, get them soaked off and be done. So that's why I didn't include it in the artificial nail cert products, but it is another one of our artificial nail products that you can definitely choose to use. All right, so let me flip my camera on while I am doing that. Um, again, if you have not typed in your attendance information in the chat box, if you're a student logging in from home, um, it needs to be your full name, full school name, and school location. If you are an educator and you're with your students, I just need your 
school name and location in the chat box with the word group. That way I know you guys are all together. And I still send your certificates over to your school. Why is my camera not turning on? Does anybody else have their computers? Like, I swear there's molasses running through it. All right. All right, let's get started. All right, so I've prepped three nails. Oh, I should have done four nails. I, I'm going to prep this nail really quick. I'm just gonna roughen up the surface. I totally forgot about doing odorless. I was just gonna do acrylic, hard gel, poly gel, but I forgot we have odorless. So I'm gonna just roughen the surface of this nail so that the product can stick to it. Okay, if you're working on a client, you wanna make sure you're doing a dry manicure. Push back the cuticles. Where's my cuticle pusher? So if this was my client, sanitize hands, push back their cuticles. Um, if you're gluing tips on, trim down the nails and then file and shape free edge. Um, we're just gonna do an overlay. So I'm gonna leave the length, we'll do tips here and then a natural nail overlay. Buff the surface of the nail with the 100 side of your 100, 180 grit buffer. Cleanse the nail with nail surface cleanse and a lint free wipe. At this point, this is when you would glue your tips on. So after gluing your tips on, blend the tips into the natural nail. Make sure that the plastic tips have also been roughened up. So take the shine off of the plastic tip. You'll then dehydrate with pH bond. So all of the nails will get dehydrated with pH bond. And then we are going to be doing odorless, traditional. We're going to apply our Pro Bond or yes, Pro Bond Acid Free Primer. So anytime you see a brush that has tiny little bristles like this, that's a good indication that you don't need a lot of product. So a little goes a long way. So I've pre-dispensed my Elegant Pink into a smaller container. Um, this is what I use on my mannequins. Um, follow your state regulations when it comes to dispensing your product. If you are not allowed to dispense directly out of your jar, make sure you have extra dampened dishes so that you can dispense and dispose of your products properly. So let me open up my pink. Probably gonna add a little more to my jar. I'm good for the week. So on my mannequin hand, I do reuse all of my liquids. Um, on clients, I do not. So I love these dampened dishes with the lids. I fill them at the beginning of the week and then I use it until they're gone or until the end of the week. For my clients, however, I prefer the smaller dampened dishes. Um, I love that they hold very little liquid. I just fill what I need. If I need to add more, I can. And then I'm, I just feel like they're less wasteful. So I do like, and then I never reuse monomer on my clients. They all get their own fresh monomer. All right, let me get rid of my brushes. So I'm using the number nine. So the first thing we want to do, we're gonna start with odorless, is condition our brush. Make sure that there is no air trapped between the bristles. If you've never used, if it's a brand new brush and you're using it for the very first time, the bristles are gonna be really stiff. There's a starchy coating that's over the bristles for packaging and shipping. Just take a lint-free wipe with some nail surface cleanser, cleanse it, get that off, and then condition your brush with monomer. So we're gonna dip in, bubbles will float to the surface. I'm gonna fan out my bristles and I'm gonna drain my brush. And I'm gonna do that about two to three times just to make sure that my brush is completely saturated with my liquid. Now I am using odorless. So with odorless, I want more of a one and a half to one. So 
So with traditional, you would dip your brush into your liquid, allow the bristles to bend. You would drain the very tip of your brush. That's the correct amount of liquid for a medium to large size bead. For odorless, I'm gonna drain a little more um, because it holds less liquid. I'm gonna angle my brush at a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna do multiple small presses into my powder. I'm gonna wait for the powder to go from textured to smooth. As soon as it starts to smooth out, I'll place that bead onto the nail, wipe my brush. When I wipe my brush, I wipe it in the direction of my bristles. I don't swirl it on a paper towel or on my towel. I don't wanna fray my bristles. And then I'm just gonna gently with my brush at a 10 degree angle, I'm just gonna gently pat the product and then smooth it out towards my free edge. Now, odorless has a slower drying time or curing time. So you have a little more time to play and manipulate your product because it takes longer to, to cure. Also, when it cures, it also leaves a sticky inhibition layer. So when you're working with odorless, you want to get rid of that inhibition layer. And to do that, we are going to add nail resin. My second bead I'm going to place in the midsection of the nail at a 45 degree angle, drain my brush. I'm going to kind of let that bead do its thing. With my brush on that 45, I'm going to gently press the product near the back of that bead just to smooth it out. Just to give it a little more of a taper. I'm just doing light pats. You want to press and compact your bead. You don't want to be brushing it too much. It increases a cloudy finish. Just want to lightly brush to smooth out the surface. Wait for that bead to go from textured to smooth. When I'm working on the cuticle area, I place that bead an eighth of an inch away from my cuticle. And with my brush at a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna go in and press that bead near that cuticle. That's gonna keep the product nice and tapered without risking the chance of getting onto the skin. And then I'm just gonna blend that bead into my previous application and smooth it out. So this has to sit for about a minute to a minute and a half because right now the product is really soft and if I were to put my resin on right now, I'm gonna get brush strokes from my resin brush on my enhancement or I could get acrylic in my resin brush. So it does take a, bit, a little bit of a time to set up. So we wanna let it sit for about a minute to a minute and a half and then I will take my resin, which is our nail glue and we're gonna do a nice thin coat of resin over the odorless system. And that will get rid of that sticky inhibition layer that odorless systems have. So while that is curing, I'm gonna clean my brush. I'll show you how I clean my acrylic brush. I just take an orange wood stick and I separate my bristles. So I'm just checking to make sure that I don't have any product built up. And then I just go between my paper towel and I push down on my bristles to absorb any of that excess liquid. And then I reshape my brush. And then to store your brush, you either want to store it bristles pointing down or laying flat. Do not get in the habit of putting it in a cup holder with the bristles pointing down or up. Monomer could still be in your brush or in the bristles and the, the monomer will drain down into the ferrule of your brush. There's an adhesive that holds your bristles in place. The monomer eats away at that adhesive. You start losing your bristles. You got to get a new brush. Um, if you do have a brush that has a cap, then by all means put the cap on it and then you can throw it in your, here's one of my brushes with a cap. So here's one of my brushes. It has a cap. This is my number 10. When I'm done, I just recap it and then I can throw it in a cup holder, bristles pointing down, and I don't have to worry about monomer getting inside my ferrule. 
All right, that's been about a minute. Let's put our resin over our odorless. We're just gonna do a nice thin coat. And then when this dries, it's gonna dry to a hard finish. And when I file the nail, it will file just like a traditional monomer. I use the same brush. I've never had any issues using my same brush for both odorless and traditional. So I don't switch them out. I just use the same brush. But I do condition it the same way. So we're going to condition. Drain the very tip. Wait for that bead to look like a pearl. Place that bead with your brush at a 10 degree angle on the free edge. Drain your brush. So odorless does not self-level as quickly, or I'm sorry, traditional does not self-level as quickly as the odorless. So you do have a little, you have to work with it fairly quickly. And again, you want to just pat, compress, and then smooth out your top. Dip in, drain the very tip, angle your brush at a 45 degree angle, multiple small presses, 45 degree angle. Pat, pat, pat. And then blend. Eighth of an inch away from the cuticle, brush at a 45 degree angle, press to spread that bead, keep it nice and tapered near the cuticle. And blend. We're gonna let that firm up and then we can file them. But we're gonna file all of them at the same time. So we're gonna move on to our hard gels. I'm just gonna clean my brush really quick. Reshape. So my brush is being housed above my head, over my, I have a light that's above me that, uh, I didn't even turn that light on, there we go. So I've got an overhead lamp, like a nail table lamp, and it has springs, and I just shove my brushes in those springs. So that's where my brushes go when I'm not using them. All right, so we're gonna move on to hard gels. So I'm gonna grab my hard gel, I'm using pink builder gel, and I'm gonna use my number six oval. So we already dehydrated all the nails, but we also need to apply our Pro Bond primer. And the first thing we wanna do is create a slick layer. This is gonna be the layer that we build on top of. It's gonna create that nice sticky adhesion for the builder gel to then stick to while we build the nail. And this layer you want really thin. So you're gonna pick up a small amount of your builder gel and it's gonna stay on your brush. It doesn't drip right off. I mean, it's, it's going to, but it stays there. We're gonna roll this bead onto the nail and I'm gonna push down on this bead and drag that bead down. So when I'm doing that, you're gonna see that um, there's a buildup of gel right here on this edge, almost like a wall. I'm trying to get that so it focuses on the bead. So you'll be able to see this buildup of gel. I wanna push that buildup and get it all the way near my nail groove. So I'm gonna go back to the center. I'm gonna push down and push that bead over. Push that little excess over 
back on this side, do the same thing. And I just want it really thin. I don't need a lot of buildup. I just need a very thin, thin, thin little wall. And the reason for that is so that when I do apply my hard gel, when I'm building, I have this little wall and it's gonna help my product stay away from a nail groove. So let's give that a 30 second cure. And I'm using my 18G unplugged. I don't think that went up, did they beep? So now we can build. So I'm going to pick up a larger bead. And I'm going to roll this bead onto the center of the nail. Now a couple things what you want you don't want to do with hard gel. I'm going to turn this hand. You don't want to be doing this and like lifting and trying to push the bead where you want it because that's gonna create air bubbles. And when you start filing, if there's air bubbles and you file through that air bubble, it creates a pocket. So you're not getting a solid enhancement. So right now I have a lot of air bubbles that I just created, but for the mannequin, that's fine. What you do want to do once you put your bead on the nail is keep your brush on the surface of that bead. And I like to just kind of swirl that bead towards my cuticle and then once I get that bead towards the cuticle I like to then bring it down and I do like a little smiley face action. I'm going to bring that bead down. I'm just floating my brush on the surface of the gel. Now tiny air bubbles, yes, that you'll probably end up having but these large ones that I currently have in my enhancement you definitely don't want that. Um, so try not to lift your brush too high off of your bead. Now what I like to do to help get a nice arc, so I'm just raising the bead just a hair. So I'm kind of going point to point, point to point, and I'm raising that bead. I'm pulling that gel to create a bit of an arc. And then what I like to do is have my clients flip their hand upside down for just a couple of seconds. That's gonna help gravity take over and pull the gel so that I can get a nice arc. And then I'm going to have them put their hand right side up and then immediately go into the light for five seconds. So I get a five second cure. So I'm flash curing it because what I wanna look at now is do I like my shape? Do I need to add more? I definitely need to add more. I like that I got my arc, um, but I have a little bit of a divot right here. I don't have enough product back here, so I need to extend this arc a little bit back a little more, smooth that out. So I'm gonna add a little more product. Once I'm satisfied with my shape and the amount of product that I've put on there, then I will give it a full 30 second cure. And I sometimes, and I won't give it a full 30 second cure. I flash cure each nail. And as long as the product isn't moving on me, I'll just move on to the next nail. And then once I've done all five fingers, then I give it a full cure. So 
again, just kind of giving it that arc, letting gravity take over. Flash cure it. Now I'm happy with that nail. Let's give it a 30 second cure. So while that's curing to clean my gel brush, I just take a lint free wipe, some nail surface cleanse, and I just get that excess off. And then always keep your brush capped so that it does not get exposed to, I have no idea if that even went on. Curing, we'll talk a little bit about the poly gel brush. So this is your poly gel tool. It's called the poly tool. It has a slicing spatula on one end and a number 10 oval synthetic brush on the other. This is what happens if you don't take care of your brush. It curls and it's not fixable. However, it makes a really great nail art brush. Um, so if you like to do buffing, like sometimes I like to take dipping powder and buff it into a nail and kind of give a shadowed look with the dipping powder. Um, this makes a really great brush to do that now that it's all frayed out. And then the other end I use for mixing colors together. All right, gel, hard gel does have an inhibition layer. So you do need to cleanse that off before you file because it's very sticky. So we're going to get that off. And now our heart, totally not in camera. So we have our hard gel cleansed, ready to be filed. So we've got odorless, traditional. Let's move on to poly gel. It's our fastest product to use. Another reason why I love it so much. There's no odor. Let me get some slip solution. So slip solution is your alcohol based product. It is designed strictly to keep your brush from sticking to the poly gel. So again, we need to, we've already dehydrated, but we do not need to use primer. Um, I lost my foundation. Where is my foundation base coat? It is missing. Daughters don't have them, or at least don't have them that want to do nails. I don't know how it just can disappear. gel is not going to stick to this mannequin hand because, well, I don't have my foundation base coat. It's seriously missing. It's probably in my salon two floors down because um, my daughter was doing her friend's nails the other day. So, hmm, do I have an extra one somewhere? Let me see if I have an extra one. Gonna use our mini. It will work. So I'm going to grab my mini foundation because <laughs> I don't know where my full one is. And we're going to do a very, 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 very thin application. You do not want a lot of foundation. You want this very thin and you really want to massage that thin layer into the nail. And we're gonna give that a five second cure.
we're going to take a clean, dry brush. We're going to wipe the surface of the nail to make that a more textured surface. We're going to squeeze the right amount of poly gel. That's a pretty long nail, so I'm going to squeeze a large amount. I'm going to slice from my tube and it stays where you put it. So it's stuck on my spatula. I'm going to roll that onto the nail. I'm going to dip my brush into my slip solution. And now I'm just going to start patting this product into shape. A couple things with poly gel. You want to make sure that you are a hairline away from the cuticle nail groove area because anything that comes in contact with the skin for sure is going to come is going to lift. So you really want to make sure that you are a hairline away. And I'm just pat, patting and pressing. The moment I feel my brush starting to stick to the poly gel, I'll go right back into my slip solution and saturate those bristles so that it doesn't stick. The nice thing about poly gel is you can go right in there with your brush around the cuticle and the nail group just to make sure that you are not getting touching the skin and you don't have to worry about product sensitivity like you do with acrylic or acrylic monomer. You're not going to get that sensitivity. And that's it. That's how fast it is to do poly gel. Another reason why I love it so much. It does need a 60 second cure. So we're going to cure that for 60 seconds. And then when I'm doing in between clients, I'll take my brush cleaner. I put it on a lint free wipe. And then I just get that residue off of my brush. I use my nail to kind of just scrape it. If I'm doing a lot of poly gel in my day, at the end of the day, I do fill a dampened dish with a little bit and let it soak for about five minutes and then wipe it clean. Um, but for the most part, cleaning in between each of my clients keeps my brush in its optimum condition and always keep your brush capped. Now, filing these different products. Acrylic, you need to start with the 150, work your way to your 180, and then buffing. Hard gel and poly gel, they file like butter. You do not need to do a lot of filing. Um, it, they just file so beautifully. Um, I typically don't even use a 150 on either one of these. I just use my 180. Sometimes with my poly gel, I don't even have to use a file. I can just buff the surface of the nail and it smooths. So poly gel, again, one of my favorite. It does not have an inhibition layer, so you don't have to worry about cleansing it. These can all now be filed. And I will file these all the same. I start with my nail groove and my free edge. You don't need to do a lot of filing near the cuticle. It should be nice and tapered. So I'm starting with my 150. I like to angle my file at a 45 degree angle for my free edge and file in a downward motion to create a nice bevel on my free edge. And you shouldn't have to do a lot of filing as long as you kept your brush at those correct angles, 10 degree for the free edge, 45 for the cuticle and stress area, because that keeps your shape. You built the shape in with your brush so that you do minimal filing. You can also use an e-file. That's entirely up to you if you're an e-file user. By all means, go ahead and use an e-file. I probably would not use an e-file with, well, I don't use an, 
in the nail. Um, I do not use an e-file with um, poly gel unless I'm removing it because it files so beautifully and so quickly. I'm gonna grab my 180 for my hard gels. Regardless of the product you use, the end result is the same. You've created an extension edge with strength and durability for your client. These all are the same. One is not healthier than the other. They all have the exact same prep. It's really preference as to what you want to use. If I had to say your enhancement that has the most durability or the hardest would be acrylic. Um, hard gels would be your softest and poly gel is in between. Poly gel is stronger than a hard gel, but it's more flexible than an acrylic. Another point of difference with poly gel is when you're filing, the dust is heavy. There's very little dust in your breathe zone, meaning the dust falls to the table. The three, these three or two acrylic and hard gel, the dust is really fine and it puffs up into your breathe zone. Poly gel, the, the dust is heavy, it's thick. So when it's when you're filing, it falls to the table and you're getting less dust in your breathe zone, which again, another reason why I tend to lean towards poly gel. It's just, you know, I, you know, work out of my home. I have my own salon, two floors down, and it just helps minimize the amount of dust I'm breathing in. So another reason why I choose poly gel over acrylic and over one for that as well. So again, it really is preference as to what you want to use. They all do the exact same thing. It really is up to you. It's your choice as to what you want to use for your client. I'm going to give all of these a buff. And then you can choose whether it is gel polish, regular polish, not going to be polishing. You could just do your clear coats. That's up to you. Regardless of how you finish, make sure your client goes, scrubs, gets the dust off, and then cleanse the nail with nail surface cleanse and a lint-free wipe just to make sure that they didn't miss any dust or if they touched their hair as they were walking back to your station that you didn't miss anything. So for my hard gel, I'm gonna finish with photo finish. And I'm just, I'm not gonna polish these. I'm just gonna throw clear coat over all of these. And then for my gel polish and my acrylics, I'm just gonna grab my top coat I'm using Top It Off. Or again, if you want to use the dual coat, you can use dual coat for your acrylic. This takes about 90 seconds 
to dry. And then when it does dry, it will have the same look as the gel polish. So if you don't have access to an LED light and you want your pink and whites to have that nice high shine finish, dual coat is a great product for that as well. And then all of these top coats that I use, they do have an inhibition layer. So they do need to be, with the exception of dual coat, because that's an air dry. So once that's dry, you don't have to worry about it. But the photo finish and the traditional top it off both have an inhibition layer that needs to be cleansed. So we'll cleanse that and that completes our service. All you have to do is add cuticle oil and massage that in. So before you guys log off, if you have not done so yet, please make sure that you type in your attendance information into that chat box. It needs to be your full name, full school name and school location. And I'm gonna wait for that to dry just a bit longer. Then I would apply my cuticle oil. I like to apply it directly onto the nail and then massage that into their finger. All right, so we have it. Poly gel overlay, hard gel overlay, traditional acrylic overlay, odorless acrylic overlay. So thank you all again so much for spending some of your morning with me. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, I'm going to scroll through the chat box really quick and make sure I didn't miss any questions. I didn't see any. I was trying to look as I was working, but sometimes, you know, I miss them. But I think for the most part, I didn't see any questions. All right, well, thank you guys again so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.